are quite reflective, you know. They are not spontaneous. They will sit and think about the issue on board, and then they will analytically or critically analyze and bring you your suggestions. So you need introverts in your team. The, the noise makers are normally the ones that are carried along, but a leader needs to sit down and see the different personalities within their team and find the best ways of engaging those people that don't normally like to talk. If you notice that somebody doesn't like to talk, you can ask them to write. Of course, they will bring what they have to the table. Then, of course, the leadership style. An autocratic leader wants to always be the one, you know, with the solutions. It is always what they bring to the table that they push to you. There's no room for you to change anything. There's no room for you to bring anything, you know, to the table. But then a democratic leader will definitely allow you, you know, to have divergent views and improve on the system. So I believe the barriers to psychological safety can be too quick to be the facilitators of psychological safety, depending on how you look at it. Like in hierarchy, uh, a pyramid hierarchy is a barrier, a flat structure is an emblem, you know. A good culture, you know, a psychologically safe culture in an environment is a facilitator. And then the personality is leadership. Oh. Let's move to the next uh, interpersonal risk taking in teams. Like I said earlier, it's not enough for the leader to provide the safety. Within the teams, people have to be able to take risks. You have to teach your people to take risks. Because without risk, I mean, you're not moving anywhere stuck where you are. You don't hide your own abilities so that people are comfortable with new things to you. They know you know everyone will not be comfortable enough to come to you. So um, somebody in my team was to ask about something and I said, well, I don't know. She was shocked. Like, you? You know, they expect you know everything. No, I don't. In fact, I'm hearing you for the first time. So, I love the beliefs. That's how I'm So they are like they are now like, you know, very comfortable with coming to me with something, you know, and they they they, they are used to me saying, let's Google it. So the first thing I ask, have you Googled it? Google is your friend. Sorry. And they yes, say yes we have, but we have different perspectives. We want you to look at them. That's okay. okay, very comfortable. I mean you are the one that will that to happen, then you have to go to this now. Please, Ma'am Fatima, you have five minutes more. To happen. Does she hear me? Hello, Ma'am. Hello? Yeah, please, you have five minutes more. Thank you. Okay, I'm rounding up. All Thank right, you. Mm. That's a little bit sympathy. You know, um, many leaders don't listen. In fact, even our doctor. Before you finish telling them what is wrong with you, they have written your prescription. It is not supposed to happen like that. You listen and you let the person talking to you that you are listening. There are non-verbal cues that will show the person that you are listening. So and then you offer what you offer. You have to you know, show them that you understand what they're going through. And if you have the solutions, fine. To guide them to the solutions, still fine. You have to live with empathy. We have built It's not enough to be a good communicator. There's no communication also because if you don't listen, well, how do you understand what is being communicated and you provide your own feedback? A lot of people self work. In fact, you know, we are told that uh, if, when you get to the gate of your organization, you're supposed to leave home at the gate, just come in. No. That is not going to happen in this instance because well, you are a worker and then you are a human being before you became a worker. So how do you expect that anybody would leave themselves at home? So you bring your whole self to work. You as a leader are supposed to know when something wrong something is wrong with somebody from the first good morning. Yeah, I see that you're not smiling, I see that you're not wearing makeup, anything the matter. And you come in. You know, I'm not one to recognize 
of safety in the workplace. Safe environment is work and accepting it. There's potential for growth, learning, you share skills and knowledge, open changes and new ideas for improvement. There's constructive conflict. There has to be conflict. An organization without conflict, a team without conflict does not improve. We have to have a culture of trust. Then when you look at the other side, an uncertain environment is extreme. Thank you very much, uh, my amiable leader, Mrs. Uh, Fatima Ango.